Hello, I'm Professor Matthew Rotella, and in this tutorial, I'm going to be going over using the uh, Maya directional light uh, to light. Uh, I'm going to be rendering in Arnold, and I'll show you just a. Uh, there isn't really too much to uh, set up in regards to uh, any Arnold settings with the directional light. Uh, as far as my setup here goes, it's uh, nothing too complicated. I got a rock pile that I modeled uh, myself, and then uh, yeah, modeled and textured myself. Then I got just some paint effects trees from Maya Paint Effects just to fill out the scene a little bit more. And then I have uh, yeah, like uh, this shader from Texture Haven on my ground. Nothing. It, it's just something I threw together just to have a little uh, something extra to look at. But basically the directional light, what it's really good for is uh, outdoor scenes or just uh, or simulating sunlight is what it's best for. So I'll go to uh, create lights, directional light. Yeah, and since it is best for sunlight, I uh, made sure to have an outdoor scene. And it's looking really small because the scene is uh, pretty big. Like these should be like trees to scale. But I can scale this up, which doesn't uh, change the light in any way. It, uh, but it will, you know, allow me to uh, see my light more easily. And it doesn't matter where you put this light in your scene. All that matters is which direction it's facing, because the re uh, the way it works is it's effectively an infinitely large light source uh, that uh, will just light your entire scene uh, in like from the direction that these uh, arrows are pointing. So it's not necessarily a physical, a physically accurate light because it is infinitely large and uh, no light is infinitely, not infinitely large, nor is any light infinitely small. Uh, but it's still good for getting, a, a, you know, like I said, like simulating sunlight and that sort of thing, which this scene ought to render reasonably quick, so let's just see what we get with the default settings. And and uh, I, I do have a sky dome light here, but it's not contributing any light to my scene. Uh, basically, in the visibility, I have it set to zero for everything except for a camera. So it's basically just a, uh, a skybox back there. Anyway, let's... See what we get here. So, by default, uh, you can see the sort of results uh, that we get. We get these really crisp shadows, uh, which, as the uh, sampling uh, gets better, you'll see this aliasing go away and stuff like that. But yeah, you get really crisp shadows, and I could definitely stand to be brighter in this scenario. So, let's do just that. Uh, and I'll show you how to make the shadows less crisp, but first let's just dial in. Let's even go, we'll go three, and if that's too high, we'll split the difference. And it's definitely more in the neighborhood. And uh, also something to make note of is uh, if this is sunlight, well, depending on the time of day, we're looking a little, uh, actually, instead of doing it with the color here, I could actually do it here in the Arnold settings and change my color temperature. But, let's see, I'll up my light samples a bit, uh, which will help reduce noise. Uh, and to get softer shadows, which you see that they'll be perfectly crisp by default, to get softer shadows you'll need to increase the angle, which the higher you increase it, the softer they will become. So 10 is going to get into the neighborhood of uh, quite soft, and you see how much that edge sort of retreated. And so on and so forth with that and uh, basically th that's really the only settings you truly need to know about is just uh, uh, it's just the intensity 
And as far as functionality goes, like I said, it's just, it doesn't matter where this is in your scene as long as it exists. And that'll give you, so now we're looking more like noon ish with, with like the sort of shadows coming down from pretty much straight up and yeah so it's all about yeah just just where uh, just the direction that this is pointing the intensity and the angle will soften your shadows which when it comes to dialing these things in always just look at the documentation which you know gives a couple examples of using uh, the directional light for sunlight from a window and on the note of the angle it says the sun subtends approximately five degrees uh, so a setting of one or two will produce slightly softened shadows and then anything higher than that will uh, get much softer so like here we are at uh, two and then six we're getting like really diffused I set mine to uh, 10 in the render that I had cooking out there but uh, there isn't really much more to go over it's just like if I want that uh, I could use the color temperature and get more like sunsetty sort of vibes and, or I could go higher and uh, get more blue tones, like uh, it, which is more like midday. But uh, that's pretty much all there is to it. Um, and then, if you're still not liking like how crisp all this is, like I can reduce the shadow density and that'll help get things even less stark which I shouldn't have gone quite that far but uh, that's more of like an opacity slider on the the on the shadows I wouldn't necessarily recommend uh, messing with your shadow density to, to keep the contrast in my scene I always like to just keep my shadow density at one but you know if things are looking too harsh for your tastes it's something to play with uh, it's all subjective, but that's, uh, yeah, that's pretty much all there is to it. So, there it is on the uh, directional link. Uh, thank you for watching. I hope that helps. Uh, goodbye.